while some of us go through many phases of when I grow up, I want to be a, some of us always knew exactly what we wanted to do. That's exactly the case for today's Across the Table guest. She's dreamt her entire life about being a mom. I recently sat down with Erin Wiswall at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars to learn more about her life as a mom and why she is so passionate about being a strong source of support for other moms. Erin, thanks for joining me. Thank Cheers. You. I want to hear all about you and especially your family because I think that is where your heart really centers. So talk to me a little bit about your family. Very proud of my family. Very grateful um, to my wonderful husband and uh, my partner in building our, our fabulous family. Um, we got back here um, mid in the mid 2000s um, when we, he moved back after school and started his own practice. and. Um, he was born and raised here in Sioux Falls. I was um, familiar with the area. I had gone to school up in Brookings. Go Jacks? Yes, go Jacks all the way. No <laughs> red in this family, although he went to Nebraska, so sometimes, sometimes some red seeps red. in there, yes. But you know, they welcomed, welcomed us back with open arms, and um, this is just a perfect community to raise a family. And I know it's said over and over again, but um, I'm living it and um, enjoy it. The process of starting a family for you, though, did present quite a few really hard to deal with challenges. It did. Um, you know, we had um, waited uh, through his schooling, um, took all the time and, you know, got the house and thought we were ready to go and, um, you know, life kind of threw us a, a, a curveball. But I will say it, uh, it's our story and uh, it definitely, um, losing our, our firstborn at 23 weeks and delivering him, it brought us closer together and uh, we have a marriage that is stronger and we were able to get through the tough times together. I think it's really hard to lose a child at any point in time, but when it, you're going through that for the first time and you've not yet experienced that it can go well, mm -hmm. that had to be scary as you trudged forward and onward. It did, and I have to say, um, there's a lot of anxiety um, through each of my following pregnancies, and we still had some ups and downs through those. You know, we chose um, to deliver all of our babies at Avera, and they were amazing, and the care was amazing, and the extra attention that they allowed me to have was was perfect. I hear you talking about just what you're doing, and I'm like, you have to be the one that needs the break, right? I think you look at staying home with your kids a little bit differently than I do. It terrified me, it did, and you just love it. I really, really do. Um, I it was it was my dream. It was my dream to be a stay-at-home mom. It was my um, dream to raise a family and a big one at that. And um, more kids and uh, family to me doesn't always have to be blood. Talk to me about the circle of moms around you too, and how important it is that you have not only have that connection but also continue to cultivate that with other people. I just love moms. I love motherhood other moms, mo uh, motherhood looks different for everybody, and I love embracing it. I love sharing ideas. Um, I love having free time with moms where we can unwind. Um, we can toss ideas around to each other. So really building um, moms around me and empowering those moms is something I'm very passionate about. You love your role as a mom and a stay-at-home mom, and but what's been the hardest thing? Like if you were like, listen, I might I love it, but... Not everything is roses. <laughs> there, there are the bad days. There are the thankless days. Um, I think um, just creating um, memories for my children um, and just allowing them to feel safe in their environment and know that um, you know mom and dad are always going to be here for you and just how to love. Sometimes I, I think that's a little bit lost. And so um, you know on the tough days, it's been a tough day, guys. Let's kind of take a break and kind of have some space and then let's regroup and come together. And that usually happens over the dinner table. So Over the dinner it, table? It does happen over the dinner table. So that's yep. the tip. Now our dinner table sometimes can be a picnic in the middle of the, of the, in the, middle of the living room, but we're, we're all together. So we're all together yes. over dinner. Yes. What dinner looks like can change. Yes. <laughs> but that's where it comes back together. Yes. That's a great tip. That's a great tip for all moms, whether you're working, whether you're at home, whether you're some sort of hybrid. I mean, everybody can kind of figure out what it looks like at the end of the day for them. For sure. Yes. But speaking of beautiful rooms, word on the street, you have quite the eye for interior design. I know you say you have help, but... I do have a lot of help. Um, one of my uh, gal pals from college, um, Laura Lean. But um, I will say I thoroughly enjoy creating a home. Um, I love making it comfortable. I love it being very comfortable for children. I mean, I just don't have objects that I worry about getting destroyed. Um, I do teach 
my kids that mom has her pretties and you can't touch everything. Um, but I always make their areas and playrooms and stuff and I, I really enjoy um, creating their, their room and their space. One thing you said to me one time that stuck with me too is that a lot of the way you pour yourself into your kids' rooms is something you learn from your mom and from moving around a lot. Yep, so I grew up military and we, in the beginning of my life we definitely moved around quite a bit. And it was always the military wife way was you set up your children's rooms first because that's what kind of gets them adjusted um, the easiest. And that's always really stuck with me. I mean, I, I know our rooms, when the Packers put all the boxes in there, it was our rooms that were set up first. I shared a room my whole life with one of my sisters, and um, I believe in that. Um, nothing brings me more joy than hearing my kids giggling at night when they're going to bed. Okay, this is gonna be a hard one. What does the future hold? Well, I just turned 40 last year, so I feel like I'm <laughs> tearing into the, the second half here. I'm optimistic. Um, you know, I am beyond blessed. I feel like I just have to be so grateful for so many things. Um, and I just want to give back to like our community. And so I just want to dive deeper into um, some of the foster care and some of um, some of the, the children's areas in Sioux Falls that, that I can really contribute to as my kids get into school age and I'll have more time to to donate towards there. Right, and continue to invest. I know investing in the community is really important to you very, too. Yes, very important to Andrew and I. So you're investing both through your family and the way you're raising them and when you can through your pocketbook and involvement and volunteerism and anything you can. Exactly. Well, cheers to that. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> At JJ's, they like to say they provide an enhanced adult beverage experience. Every time you walk in their doors, you're sure to find great food and drink and great people at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. They're located at 3000 West 57th Street in Sioux Falls. You can find out more about their specials and events by checking out their website at jjswine.com. And don't forget to check out the Boozy Bakery when you shop JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Whether you're looking for something special to go with a dry red wine or need a sweet treat to pair with a pint, the kitchen is open and they've got plenty of desserts to choose from that will help create a special pairing for any occasion. The Boozy Bakery also has online ordering available and they will be happy to deliver your order curbside. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by JJ's Wine, Spirits and Cigars, an enhanced adult beverage experience in Sioux Falls.